Hey friends, uh, it's a beautiful day where I am, so I thought I'd record a video while walking. I recorded a video about a year ago about uh, having found my life's work, basically. It was called uh, How I Currently Understand My Vow, Three Endeavors, and I talked about how the themes of love, curiosity, and empowerment are sort of three locuses of my attention and that um, the service projects that I do fit into those headers. Uh, and that may change. You know, your vow is not a concept, but it can be helpful to put concepts to how you understand your vow. and. Anyway, over the last year or so, that's held true. And it's been really helpful to have that framing and think of my time and my energy and my projects in those terms. And a lot has come out of that. And I recently announced this on Twitter, but I want to talk about it here too, uh, that really over the last six months or so, that's formalized into a kind of working cooperative, which we're playfully calling Tosh and Inc. Uh, I'd love to maybe change the name of that at some point, but uh, this started because last year I started working with Mary Bajoric on the empowerment work. And at a certain point I said to her, uh, hey Mary, it's as if, you know, there's a company called Tosh and Inc. and it has three departments, love, curiosity, and empowerment. And you know, you're in charge of the empowerment department. And there's also these other projects, love and curiosity. And uh, she really took that metaphor and ran with it. Uh, she started talking about the departments and eventually, um, you know, I saw how helpful it was to work with Mary in particular um, on the empowerment work and have that working relationship. And I wanted to start having uh, similar leaders of the other departments and my friend Zev Benjamin was the natural choice for the love department because we'd already been working on some major projects together for the uh, love department and I eventually asked Eric, Eric Chisholm, to lead the curiosity department and also there's several other working relationships that I've established, different people that I'm working with and at this point there's depending on how you count six seven eight nine people that i'm working with it's kind of like an informal working cooperative um it's not a company it's not a nonprofit. we might make it a nonprofit or maybe a company at some point but right now it's very informal these are all informal working relationships and uh, it's been really helpful to formalize that and have clear departments and um, clear roles. And, you know, another thing that we've done is write visions for each of the departments. And these might change, of course, as well, but it's so helpful to have a clear vision that we're aiming towards. And I've written those up and shared them. You can see these visions and the roles that I, of the people that I'm working with on my website. The page is tashin.com slash inc, I-N-C, and I think you'll enjoy reading those. They're um, really beautiful visions that I crafted with each of the three people that are in charge of the three departments, Mary, Zev, and Eric, for empowerment, love, and curiosity, respectively. And yeah, they inspire me. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's the work I want to do in the world. And uh, they inspire us and clarify what we're trying to do and that's the big long-term vision for each of them and the projects that we're doing now fit into that and are leading towards those visions in the short and medium term. I felt really blessed to have all of these collaborators, Mary and Zev and Eric and B.I. and Abby and Alex and James and been working with Brent and Ben Pence and so 
some other folks that I'm connected to and in different ways. And it's been so helpful to have their support and their skills and their gifts. And we're really able to do far more together than we could alone, than any one of us could do alone. And then the world receives more benefit for that reason. Uh, you know, there's a bigger impact. And I think that's really the overall frame of the organization, this Tassen Inc. thing, is how to do service projects that are fun for us, fun service projects that are of what I call maximum deep benefit. How to benefit as many beings as possible as deeply as possible. And that's what all the projects and the departments are aimed at is, you know, they're fun things for us. So it's, it's sort of self-sustainable. It's not burdensome or work or something like that to uh, do these projects, but it's fun and rewarding. And you'd almost have to force me to stop working on my projects for myself. Um, you know, I work every day and it's the most fun thing for me is my work and my projects. Um, it's more remote, more rewarding for me than really anything else in my life because it's my life's work. It's my vow. It's what I'm here to do. So uh, I trust that and have found it so clarifying and useful to focus on that in particular. You know, these are the three themes and this is what I'm doing and my projects fit into that. And it's there's there's a really wide birth there to explore projects. You know, love is sort of doubling down on one thing that is really important to me and curiosity is very, very open-ended. It can go a lot of different directions and empowerment is connected to other people um, and helping them with their vows and everyone has their own unique vow and so there's a lot of variety there. So, um, and I get a lot of energy out of switching between the different departments. You know, if I did just one of them, I would get bored in a specific way. I can imagine that. And because there's, there's, it's almost like I have three part-time jobs that I work. Uh, I don't get bored by my work. I can always switch to something different. There's always something fun and exciting to do. And whatever I do carries my vision forward. So really blessed to have found my life's work at this time and uh, to be able to have collaborators that are willing to do that work with me. And that's part of why I want to make this video as well, because I think that the organizational structure that we're developing and trying out, it's, it's an experiment, but it's, it's really different than anything I've seen before. You know, I've worked at nonprofits before. I worked at a startup very briefly. Um, you know, I only held a proper job for like two months in my life. But when I was at the Monastic Academy, that was a nonprofit. And you know, I worked there for about five years total in a lot of different roles. And in any case, I've never seen something quite like what we're doing right now. Um, and there's a few properties that I thought would be useful to reflect on out loud in case it's interesting to someone else and useful. I'd like to see more of this kind of thing in the world. So I want to share it. Um, I think the first thing to say is that the people that I'm working with are volunteering their time by default. They're choosing to work with me out of intrinsic motivation because, you know, it's fun for them. It's rewarding. It's interesting work to them. It's something that they can see is going to help the world and is also going to help them to grow personally. And that's, that's rewarding. Finding work like that isn't um, a given or guaranteed and uh, people only have so much patience for work that isn't that, you know, I mean, if it's lucrative or high status or something like that, there people have patience for that. But I think deep down in their heart, people want work that's enjoyable for them, that's well suited to them, that's, you know, uh, a benefit to the world and will help them to grow. And the projects that I do are structured to help people do that. So they're volunteering their time and it's all part time. Um, I'm the only person that works full time on my projects right now. Um, it's all part time. And so people are 
responsible for their own financial well-being. They have to have a job or savings or some other situation that lets them volunteer some of their time part-time to working with me. And then, um, you know, I do my projects as much as possible by generosity. You know, I have a Patreon. People can make a one-time donation to me if they want to. Um, I prefer generosity. It's, um, it's like I give my time and energy as a gift and the world can support me if they want to. And if they don't, no problem. That just works better for me than commercial transactions as a default. There are some things that I sell commercially where it makes sense for various reasons to do so, but generosity is the default. Uh, and then if, if a project that I work on with someone brings in money, um, I, I split that with the people that worked on that project. So um, if, it, if it's something that brings in money, they receive money from that efforts. But by default, it's um, volunteering their time. And since everything by default is on a generosity basis, there's no guaranteed income or something like that. Um, it's not, and th that means that people are working out of intrinsic motivation. You know, you don't do something like that just because you think you should or from some external pressure. Or, you know, I can't currently at least pay people a salary for working with me. I would like to at some point, but at this point it means that people are choosing to work with me and want to be doing that work and that's really an asset. And it means that, you know, it's more fun and rewarding for everyone. It's not uh, some job that people are feeling forced to go to or something. I don't know. I never wanted to work a job like that, so why would I expect someone else to work for me like that? I want people to choose, actively choose to work with me. Um, I really try to treat people the way I would want to be treated, and I have, I have very high standards for collaboration, and uh, yeah, I try to treat people that way. I've also really found it useful to have clear roles, clear roles and, and, and a hierarchy. And um, we also use commander's intent, as I understand it from the strategy world, uh, for military strategy, where like I am in charge of the Toshin Inc. thing, uh, but, and, and, you know, Mary's in charge of empowerment and Zev is in charge of love and Eric's in charge of curiosity. and. With re respect to Tosh and Inc., I am their boss with respect to the whole system. But with respect to those departments, I actually work for them. I've like hired them to be my boss with respect to that work. Um, and that's a delicate balance and you ha have to learn that, you know, what's what and what's whose decisions. But I put people in charge of things that are their responsibility because I trust them and I've seen that they're able to be trusted with that responsibility in those uh, domains. And then they make decisions about what we should do with certain things and tell me what to do. I love that actually. Uh, it's so nice, you know. I go to a meeting and Mary or Zev or Eric says, you know, you do this. This is what you need to do now. I'm like, great, excellent. Um, and then things with more like what the vision is and um, how to balance time and energy and resources between the different departments, that's a that's a system system level decision. Um, I'm I'm still in charge of those sorts of things. Um, like I I chose that there were love and curiosity and empowerment departments. I chose who was in charge of those things. But then now that those departments exist, they're in charge of them. Um, and then there are other people that I work with who are in specific departments. And like Bi is in the love department. He's wonderful. He's sort of our event coordinator and. That's what he's in charge of. And so he sort of works for Zev, who works for me. And there's this clear hierarchy. And that's actually really useful. Um, a lot of people have, these days, have sort of a stigma against hierarchy and with good reason, because power can be abused. And a lot of the hierarchies that people are used to are, you know, things that you're not voluntarily opting into or you're sort of subject to. Um, but when you're act when you're choosing to do work of your own volition, of your own accord, that's not relevant. You know, the people are choosing to work with me, work on this team, and then also uh, hierarchy is just useful. It's useful to have a clear 
person that has a clearly delineated role with clearly delineated responsibilities and um, someone that's in charge. And I've even, even asked people to support me that I sort of work for. I asked Alex Heller to be my boss and um, have had some mentors that I've brought on to ask for support with various things. So like, even me, I'm not quote in charge. Uh, it is, there's sort of hierarchy and, um, and really I, ultimately I find it useful to think of myself as working for the universe, uh, for all beings. That's really been a useful frame for me. Um, but yeah, I think hierarchy is very useful. It's useful to have clear people that are clearly in charge of certain things. And, um, and also it's, it's bi-directional really, right? Like I hired Mary, Zev and Eric and they sort of work for me, but I also work for them and, um, they're in charge of various things with me. So it actually goes in both ways. And, um, the sort of quote subordinate is also in charge of the leader if it's done well it's not just oh i tell everyone what to do the leader tells people what to do they're actually working for the people that they hired or put in various positions because they trusted them to do that work right um and that brings me to another point that i've noticed during this process which is like i've kind of played the role of visionary in each of these three domains the departments that I have built in this organization. Um, and the three people that I've assigned to lead each of them, Mary, Eric, and Zev, uh, they have a certain almost like role that there's commonalities that I've noticed where there's someone who can take a specific vision and then run with it. You know, I created the vision, I've brought the seed to the garden and then they're like, rich soil for that particular seed to grow in um you know mary is well suited to the empowerment department eric is well suited to the curiosity department zev is well suited to the love department they're fertile soil for the specific work that we're doing together and they can take that vision and run with it act on it make decisions within it um, So I've really found that to be interesting, that relationship. And it's almost, it's almost like um, what comes to mind is like a video game class where like, you know, in a video game, there might be like a tank, right? This, the, the big strong person or a, a healer or, you know, a wizard or whatever, um, you know, a sniper. I don't know. It depends on the video game, but there's different classes. And so the visionary is almost one class and that's a certain kind of leader. And then there's this different class of, um, I don't know what you'd call it, but like a lieutenant or something like that, that uh, takes the vision and can actually execute on it. And they're more skilled at that and more adept at that. And, and you know, there's sort of the subclasses of like, you know, Eric is, it's, it's amazing. I'm so glad to start working with him. It's like, oh, curiosity. Uh, he completes that vision in a certain way and Mary for empowerment and Zev for love and so on. Um, so I found that really an interesting theme an interesting trend. Yeah, and above all, I just feel excited about this. I feel blessed every day to be doing the work that I'm doing and to be supported by people in doing it and for their generosity and um, that I get to do work that I love, that I enjoy, that helps me to grow. And this is a way that I'm able to increase how much service is happening in the world, uh, how much benefit is happening. And I think about it in terms of what I call service project throughput. This is an idea from the theory of constraints, throughput, um, where there's a, a rate at which things are being completed in the system. You know, a traditional example would be cars in a car factory, manufacturing. You know, you have to actually complete the car. You have to put a windshield in and, you know, mirrors and tires and a license plate and whatever and then and then you can sell it you can't sell it without the windshield or a seat belt or whatever so um, the thing that I'm paying attention to that I'm trying to increase the throughput for is um, the rate at which these fun service projects are completed really the the amount of fun that I have doing them and then ultimately the the benefit that is had the impact that's had how broad and how deep is that impact and, you know, you can actually start to think in these terms and even measure them to some extent. Um, I don't have like K 
KPIs right now for them or something, but I have a sense of it. I've developed a sensibility around it. You know, how many projects are we able to do? How big is the scale of the project? Um, and that's getting bigger. This whole organization is making it possible for that service, thro service project throughput to increase. So I feel so blessed for that. And like the bigger that gets, not only is more service being had, is a bigger impact being had, but also the amount of fun that I'm having is going up. Uh, and and um, we're all kind of getting better at what we're doing and enjoying it more and yeah, having that bigger impact. So I feel so blessed uh, to be doing this work with these folks and trying this new novel way of doing things and wanted to share it with you. If this sounds interesting to you, uh, you'll probably enjoy reading that Tasha Nink page. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this and uh, have a beautiful rest of your day.